In all of Jimmy Johnson's 83 career victories, the person to finish second to him the most was Kevin Harvick, with a staggering 28 second place finishes to him. That is nearly half of Harvick's all-time career second place finishes. Currently, the number is 62. This year's race at Watkins Glen had the most drivers from different countries, with seven. But in 2007, if you include the DQs of the race, six different nations were represented. America, Canada with Ron Fellows, Colombia with Juan Pablo Montoya, Germany with Klaus Groff, Tasmania with Marcus Ambrose, and Belgium with Mark Gossens. Bobby Dragon was a Bush North driver who won 17 races in the 1980s. He only ever finished 14th overall in standings though. Chad Hockenbrot was a NASCAR driver from New Philadelphia, Ohio that got one career top five finish in trucks, being second at Canadian Tire driving for Kyle Busch Motorsports. The driver who won that race was Chase Elliott in his first ever NASCAR touring one. Bobby Dodder has owned cars for nearly 30 years in NASCAR and finally got his first win this year with Cole Custer driving his classic 07. Before that, the closest Dodder's team had gotten to winning was with Gray Galding at Daytona in 2020. Gray Galding only ever has one career top 10 in Cup. He got it at Talladega in 2017, driving the BK Racing number 83. The surprising fact about this was he was only 19. Buck Baker won the 1953 Race 8 of the Grand National Tour. It was at the infamous Langhorne Speedway. He came from the 25th starting spot for that race, which was the furthest back a winner would ever come at that track, only being duplicated once in the last race at Langhorne by Gwen Staley. Whilst many recall Wendell Scott's career in NASCAR, not many know that his son Wendell Scott Jr. also had a brief racing career, driving the Grand National East Series, carrying his father's iconic 34 there as well. Eric Jones won the 2022 Southern 500 driving Richard Petty's 43 car. That was the 43 car's 200th victory, but even more importantly, it was the first win at Darlington for the 43 car since 1967. Richard surprisingly went 25 years without winning at Darlington, only capturing three victories at the track before going winless from 67 onwards. Chase Briscoe won the Spring Phoenix race and became the 200th different winner in the Cup Series. 2022 is not the first time in the modern era that we've had five first-time winners in a season. The last time it occurred was in 2011, when Trevor Bain, Regan Smith, David Reagan, Paul Menard, and Marcos Ambrose all won. It's also happened in 2002 and 2001. Adding on to that last fact, if you thought the first-time winners in 2022 were crazy, between the years 2000 to 2002, 14 drivers got their first career victories. That means every 7 to 8 races, there would be a first-time winner for 3 consecutive seasons. During the full Martinsville race this year, something historic happened at the finish. Christopher Bell became the 100th different driver to win his fourth career race. During Brad Kozlowski's run to win a truck race, he finished second five times. The drivers he lost to included Kevin Harvick, Justin Lofton, James Busher, Ty Dillon, and Kyle Busch. Kale Gale is older than Kyle Busch. Paul Wolf won his second title as crew chief this year, with his second driver, Joey Logano. The only other crew chiefs to win a championship with two different drivers are Darian Grubb, Dale Inman, Travis Carter, Doug Reichert, Tim Brewer, Bud Moore, and Carl Kaikaffer. But Grubb, Carter, Brewer, and Riker all did it as either a collaborative effort or one of their titles was not in a full-time role. That means Paul Wolf is part of a group that only features Dale Inman, Bud Moore, and Carl Kaikaffer as the only ones to do it by themselves for both seasons with two different drivers. From 2017 to 2022, the Rookie of the Year winners from those seasons combined for only 10 wins currently. If you were to sample the Rookie of the Year winners from 1999 to 2004, their total career victories after 2004 is 44. Red Farmer won the NASCAR Modified Championship in 1956. Of the 1950s Modified Champions, Farmer is the only one that raced past 1964, from what I can find at least on record. And he raced this year, 66 years after that championship. In the Daytona duels at the start of the year, Richard Childress Racing and Hendrick Motorsports both have 16 wins each in those races. Hendrick has done it with Benny Parsons, Darrell Waltrip, Ken Schrader, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Chase Elliott, and William Byron. RCR has done it with just Dale Earnhardt, Mike Skinner, Robbie Gordon, Jeff Burton, Kevin Harvick, and Austin Dillon. Bobby Labonte only led the most laps in a race eight times. Of those, he won five of them, and seven of them came at 1.5 mile tracks. The one that didn't was at Rockingham in 2000. Tony Stewart led 1,223 laps during his rookie year in 1999. He would best that only two times after that, with his championship year in 2005 and the year he missed the third chase in 2006. 
Johnny Sauter dominated the 2004 truck race at IRP. It would have been his first truck win, but was beaten a last lap pass. This resulted in Johnny not winning a truck race for five years, and the man who forced him to wait was none other than Chad Chaffin. Enrico Abreu's only ARCA East win at Columbus Motor Speedway, he beat Canadian Grant Quinlan, who finished second in his first ever ARCA East start. That would turn out to be the closest Grant would ever get to victory. He would finish third, however, in the 2019 Daytona ARCA race. Ironically, Richard Petty's 15th and final win at Martinsville came in the year of his seventh and last championship. James Busher lost the Truck Series title in 2011 by 29 points. He did this after Dean queuing Phoenix at the start of the year. If he had made that race and just finished 14th or better, James Busher would have won back-to-back -back truck titles. The last time Richard Petty and David Pearson finished 1-2 was the 1977 race at Riverside. Petty would beat Pearson by 9.6 seconds, and this was a week after they had done the same thing at Charlotte in the 1977 Coke 600. That time Petty won by 30 seconds. Buck Baker ran his last race in 1976, where he finished 24th at Charlotte. He did get a top 10 earlier in the year though, a 6th at Darlington. In the 1986 Bristol Night Race, Darrell Waltrip won $41,725, equivalent to $113,453.93 in 2022. In 1989, at Jennerstown Speedway, the Bush North Series hosted a battle between Kelly Moore and Jamie Aub, which led to a photo finish of Moore beating Kelly by a half a car length. Junior Johnson in 1965 averaged leading 111 laps per start during that season. Overall, he ran 36 races. The most recent Daytona 500 winner that isn't an active team is now Jim McMurray's 2010 win, when Earnhardt Ganassi Racing won. In the 12 races that were run at Smoky Mountain Raceway, Richard Petty and David Pearson won 7 of the 12. Neil Castles may never won a cup race, but he did win two Grand National East races along with a 1972 championship after missing the first race of the season. The most winningest team in the 1990s in the Daytona 500 was Morgan McClure Racing. In the first 10 seasons of official Bush Series sanctioning, only six cup winners actually finished top 10 in points. Jimmy Spencer, Dale Jarrett, Brett Bodine, Mark Martin, Bobby Labonte, and Joe Nemechek. Clay Rogers is known by most as the truck driver who randomly led the points after Daytona in 2011. But Clay actually in the old X1R Pro Cup Series has 36 career victories along with five championships. Whilst many think that Brett Moffat is still a relatively young driver in NASCAR, his first ARCA start came over 13 years ago now. Parker Kligerman dominated the 2009 ARCA Menard Series with 9 wins in 21 races. However, Justin Lofton would win the title by only 5 points, being the winner of only 6 races that year. In the 1969 Alabama 200 at Montgomery Speedway, Bobby Allison claimed victory over Richard Petty by just 4 feet, estimating that in time for modern margin of victories, that would be a roughly 5 one hundredths of a second in victory for Bobby Allison over Richard Petty. In Tim Richmond's first and last season, the first start of the year for him both came at Pocono. Wilbur Rackestraw drove the highest car number in the Cup Series history. It was number 999. Dale Jarrett is known to have been with Joe Gibbs in Cup, but he drove for another football personality as well in his career. Brett Favre owned a number 11 Green Bay Packers car, where Jarrett drove it in 1999 at Darlington in the Xfinity Series. Expanding up Brett Favre's ownership, his most success came with Kenny Irwin Jr., driving the car to two top fives at Texas and Dover in 1999. Many remember how Dave Blaney in the 77 almost won with Kurt Busch and Ricky Craven battled during the classic Spring Darlington race in 2003. But the 77 was even closer to victory in 2001, when it finished second to Kevin Harvick at Chicagoland. Does anyone remember when this car ran? The 74 has seen a random amalgamation of drivers run it. From Reed Sorensen to Cole Wett, to L.D. Austin and my favorite of them all, J.L. Justice. Roger Carter has one career ARCA top 10. It came in 2013. He had to beat Buster Graham, Thomas Prater, and Milka Duno for it. In the 1976 second Daytona qualifying race, Darrell Waltrip and Richard Petty finished 1-2. Bobby Ellison and Cuckoo Marlin got 4th and 5th. But 3rd from the pole was none other than Terry Ryan, driving the Wham Racing 81. Martin Shrek Sr. in his last ARCA East start finished 5th in a 42 car field, driving for Donnie Ling Jr. In 1987 at Road Atlanta, Patty Moyes finished 8th, driving for herself after leading 18 laps of the race. She was even the last person that Morgan Shepard passed to win the race, being 5 laps short of winning. Dick Dixon was a golden era driver for Dan Cologne during the early 1960s. He finished top 5 5 times in only 11 starts, but never claimed victory. Whilst Jimmy Johnson swept both 2004 Darlington races, 
Kurt Busch finished sixth in both of them as well. Andy Seuss has only made one cup start for Rick Ware Racing in 2019. But in that race, Seuss finished ahead of Daniel Hemrick, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., David Reagan, Kyle Larson, Austin Dillon, Jimmy Johnson, and Chase Elliott. Early 2000s NASCAR Xfinity driver Jimmy Kitchens is one of a few drivers from the infamous Hueytown, Alabama. Whilst many know Glenn Jarrett for his broadcasting career, Glenn also raced, making 10 cup starts in the late 1970s and early 1980s. His best finish was the 12th in the 1980 race at Ontario Speedway. The two most winningest not active numbers currently are numbers 28 and 88, which ironically are tied at 76 each, and were the staple numbers of the iconic Robert Yates racing team. In 2006 at Holland International Speedway, Mike Johnson and Mike Olson were both beat by a Byron Chu, driving for Buzz Chu in the ARCA East series. Ron Ornley Jr. lost the 1994 ARCA West title by 23 points to Mike Chase. It was because Hornley DNQ'd a combination race with Cup, whilst Chase made the race and finished 42nd. That combination race was not at the classic Phoenix Raceway. Instead, it was in the 1994 Brickyard 400. The 1981 Mountain Dew 500 at Pocono had a stacked top 10. Darrell Waltrip, Richard Petty, Benny Parsons, Harry Gant, Kale Yarborough, Ricky Rudd, Buddy Baker, Kyle Petty, Tim Richmond, and finishing 10th, beating out Dale Earnhardt, Gary Ballou, and Terry Labonte, was Ron Bouchard. Everyone knows Richard Petty's last cup win. Barry Webb was his last second place finish. Three years after Daytona, he would finish second in the 1987 Valleydale Meets 500. Who did he lose to? Dale Earnhardt. Dale's last career second place finish isn't so honorary. Jimmy Johnson never raced Dale Earnhardt, so that seven time procession thing comes to an end at just one. But one man on planet Earth can say he was the last man to beat Dale Earnhardt, and it's Jerry Nadeau. Now this is getting weird, but Nadeau's only career second place finish came at the Fall Dover race in 2001. Who won that race? Dale Earnhardt Jr. In 2005, Martin Truex Jr. got his first career top 10 at the Coke 600. It was the most caution played race ever, and Truex actually brought out the first caution of that event. Shrix also has a wheel modified start. However, he didn't even compete in a lap in that race, falling out on lap zero for handling. Before Cup would race in New Hampshire, Xfinity would actually run 300 mile races there, by far one of the longest races on the schedule at that point. In all of Ricky Craven's wins in Cup, Xfinity, and Trucks, his largest margin of victory came in his last win. It was at Martinsville in 2005. Driving a truck, he would win by officially 1.013 seconds. Almost every other race Craven won was a nail biter. Whilst many don't remember 2017 as a great season, it actually holds the record for most passes for victory in the final 10 laps of a race. It happened 20 times that year out of the 36 races. The driver who holds the record for most wins by passing a driver of less than 10 to go is Jimmy Johnson, who did it 28 times in his career. He beats out Jeff Gordon, who is second to him with only 27. In the modern era, the season with the least amount of these finishes is surprisingly 1992, where it only happened twice. Fred Lorenzen won all but one of his 26 career victories with Holman Moody Racing. At Augusta in 1962, Lorenzen won one race for Mammy Reynolds, which would turn out to be their only win as an owner as well. Lorenzen also won at Bristol in two different ways. One time he led 494 laps, and the other time he led only one lap, passing Richard Petty in the 1964 Volunteer 500. Petty led 442 laps before that. That race would turn out to be the most dominant choke of Richard's career, never giving up another race after leading 400 laps again. Mike Harmon finished 23rd during the 2017 Coca-Cola Firecracker 250. He would be Eric Jones, Tyler Reddick, Daniel Hemrick, Justin Allgaier, Casey Mears, and Daniel Suarez. In Darrell Waltrip's second career victory, the rest of the top five was Lenny Pond, Dick Brooks, Cecil Gordon, and J.D. McDuffie. To continue with the parade of independent drivers, the rest of the top 10 was James Hilton, Elmo Langley, Bruce Hill, Cuckoo Marlin, and Jabe Thomas. Darrell would go on to win 82 more times, whilst all the other drivers combined would only go on to win one more time, Lenny Pond in 1978. That race Lenny won in 1978 had him beating Donnie Allison, Benny Parsons, Cale Yarbrough, David Pearson, Bobby Allison, Richard Petty, and Neil Bonnet, all of which would go on to win again, whilst Lenny would not. The top three in the 1982 Holly Farms 400 have car numbers that are all multiples of 11. The last two drivers to drive 69 in ARCA East were Kyle Larson and Daniel Suarez. Jeff Gordon is well known for winning 13 races in 1998, setting a mark that hasn't been touched since, but his 1992 season in Xfinity also saw him set a benchmark. He won 11 poles that season, 
the all-time record for the Xfinity Series. In Rex White's last career victory, he got the lead with three to go and still built a 12-second lead over Joe Weatherly. This year's race in Michigan tied the smallest field of cars in a race there since 1981. Whilst many remember Stephen Wallace's lowlights, he did finish fourth in his first ever truck race behind Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Eric Almirola. In the race before his last race, Fireball Roberts finished second at Darlington, losing by only a measured quarter mile according to spectators. In the 2007 Centurion Boats at the Glen, the highest finishing Ford was Robbie Gordon. The highest finishing Toyota was PJ Jones. The one car has 24 wins in NASCAR. The driver who has the most in it is actually a tie between various competitors. Billy Wade, Donnie Allison, and Jay McMurray are all tied at four. All those wins for Billy Wade, by the way, came in a row, and then he never won again. Marty Robbins' best cup finish came in 1974 in Michigan. He got fifth, finishing behind Gary Bettenhausen, David Pearson, Earl Ross, and Richard Petty. In the 1977 dual race one for the Daytona 500, there was a total of 448 career victories. Whilst in Duel 2, there was only 269. Through St. Mars Jr.'s Cup career, he only finished top 10 7% of the time. But every year after 2010 in Xfinity for him, the only year he didn't finish top 10 7% of the time was 2015, where he blew up once in his three starts and then finished top 15 in the other two. Elliott Sadler had only two top fives in 2001. One was, of course, his win at Bristol that spring. The other was when he finished the proverbial second to the DEI 1-2 at Daytona in July. Carl Long's only win on Racing Reference comes at Bristol in 1997, racing in the Slim Jim All-Pro Series. Whilst Ron Hornaday and Mike Skinner were two of the best truck drivers during the early races of the truck series, it took them till halfway through 1996 to finish 1-2 together. It was at Louisville Motor Speedway, where Hornaday won and Skinner got second. In Tim Flock's last career race, Dave Pearson would go on to win what would be his first career race. Dale Earnhardt only ever won two races by leading less than 10 laps. The first was 1991 North Wilkesboro, where he led nine laps, passing Harry Gant late ending Harry Gant's iconic Mr. September streak. And in 1995, when he got his lone road course win, he only led two laps. Jeff Gordon had a grueling start to his 2015 season. He wrecked twice at the start of the year. It took him to only race six, though, to get back into the playoffs. Mario Goslin made only two cup starts, both during the first chase. In those two starts at Martinsville and Darlington, he finished 41st both times. Johnny Rutherford's last cup start came in the first Phoenix race. In this year's Fall Phoenix Racing Cup, Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney combined to lead 296 laps of 312 laps. That is the all-time record for most laps led by a single team in a race at Phoenix. In 2007 at California Speedway, Mike Skinner, Ron Hornaday, and Jack Sprague finished 1-2-3, arguably the three greatest truck drivers of all time and they were still dominating at the average age of 47 at that time. While Darrell Waltrip is known for his dominance at Bristol, he also grabbed 10 wins along with five in a row at North Wilkesboro. He's the second all-time winningest driver there, only behind Richard Petty. If Casey Abbott had been able to stay in Cup, he'd be entering his 23rd season in 2023, and he'd still be younger than Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, and Martin Truex Jr. And if he were to race as old as Harvick, he would have at least five more years in front of him. Before Steve Park was severely injured at Darlington in 2001, he was actually top 10 in points, only DNFing twice, both because of mechanical issues. Coming into that weekend before he got hurt, he actually had a run of six finishes of 13th or better, 